Today we're going to share with you guys our Metametrics cheat sheet. We also have one for TikTok as well, um, but we're just going to run through the meta version of it. So we've broken it down by different objectives, as well as the element that that relates to, the key metrics, the metric definitions with its um, formulas, so that you know exactly what or how those metrics are calculated, and then also just some optimization insights or tips. So we're going to start off with um, the objective of, cap of capturing attention, and this is specific to video. So here we look at the hook, which is the first three seconds of a video, and the metric that is relevant to this is the hook rate. This is a custom metric, so you would need to actually set it up in Meta, in your Ads Manager, um, but luckily we've shared with you the formula as well, so you can just go ahead and do that um, and add it to your, your columns. So ideally here we want um, a hook rate of at least 30%. So if your hook rate is below this, then there are some things that we need to look at. But before we go into that, just to quickly again define exactly what a hook rate is. So that is actually the percentage of people that watch the first three seconds of your video. Um, and to determine whether or not we are effective in doing that, um, we need a hook rate of minimum 30%. 30 but also then ask yourself the question, did it make them stop scrolling? So is that hook really effective um, and strong enough to make people stop scrolling? Ultimately on um, our social media platforms, it's very much saturated with so much content. Um, so you really need to get creative to um, stand out and to make people stop scrolling. Um, and the way that you can do that is really by focusing on pain points and offering people a solution to their problem. Um, Options or, or kind of ways that you can test this out and just try and improve your hook rate is by um, altering the hook with different visuals, text overlays or audio to make people stop scrolling. So you can essentially use the same creative and just change the hook so that you have one kind of variable that you're testing at a time. Then in addition to the hook rate, we also consider the hold rate. So this is post the hook and it's again also a custom metric. So just make sure that you set that up to um, be able to use it in your analysis. But this looks at the percentage of people that watch the first 15 seconds of your video. So if your video is less than 15 seconds, it just takes into account the completion. So questions to ask yourself here is, does it retain them after the hook? Um, and if this is low, then you need to modify the content right after the hook. So after like between four to eight seconds. Um, and again, this is just this you can do by testing um, kind of different angles or a different structure of your video um, and see what really grabs people's attention or maintains people's attention throughout the video. Um, then we can move on to the sorry, let me move the bubble. We can move on to driving website traffic. So here we look at the creative, the content and the targeting. Um, and this is both video as well as non-video, so your static images as well. So here we consider the CPM, which is your cost per thousand impressions. Okay, so a high CPM would indicate that your ads are reaching fewer people for the same budget. So that would suggest that you need to optimize either the ad content or the target audience to essentially lower your cost so that you can increase the reach, so that you can reach more people. Um, so again, this will take a bit of testing on your side. Um, to test different audiences um, and content to see what, what works best and where you're really getting the most um, efficient CPM. Then we can go on to our outbound click-through rate. So this is the percentage of impressions that actually lead to a click outside of Facebook, so that clicks through to your website. And a high outbound click-through rate suggests that people find your products or services attractive. So it's relevant to them um, and they are attracted to either the offer or the prob the solution that you're offering. Um, so naturally, we want an out our outbound click rate as high as possible, right? So if you see that it is quite low, then I would suggest, again, testing different content, so different angles, as well as different audiences to see what resonates best with them, because the higher the relevance to that user, the more um, likely they are to actually click through, which will result in a higher click through rate. Then we also look at unique um, outbound click-through rate, click rate. So this essentially just deduplicates 
um, your outbound clicks. So again, multiple people can click on your ad or the same person can click on your ad multiple times. So this just looks at the unique users or the unique amount of people that actually click through. Um, and again, it's the same as our outbound click through rate. So the higher, the more attractive and relevant it is to your users. If it's below average, then look at uh, testing new audiences and um, different hooks and angles. Lastly, we look at frequency. So this is the average number of times a single user sees your ad over a specific period. Um, and we need a monitor frequency to ensure optimal exposure, because if it's too high, it can lead to ad fatigue, um, which reduces engagement and also can lead to increased costs. Um, there is kind of a suggested frequency of like two to four, which is kind of your ideal. But we have seen instances where a very high um, frequency yields very great results. So it is very unique to each business case and each account. Therefore, you need to monitor it um, to see what that impact looks like for your business. Cool. Then we can go into drive website engagement. So we consider the landing page and the website experience here. And we have some additional metrics that we've included that is um, specific to GA4. So it's not available in your Meta Ads Manager, but it's still good metrics to actually just measure and keep track of. So the first one is engagement rate. Um, so that just looks at people's engagement rate on your actual website. Um, and low engagement obviously look, well, in that case, you need to consider optimizing your landing page. Um, so you want people to explore more and kind of browse your website. Um, and then time on site, again, how long are people actually spending on your site? A very high um, time on site can sometimes indicate issues with your website. So that might be that people are not either finding what they're looking for, it's not optimized properly. So the user journey might be a bit difficult for users to navigate. Um, but again, very much um, unique to each business case. If you have a massive site, something like Take A Lot, then naturally people are going to spend quite a bit of time on there because they are browsing and you know just doing some window shopping um, before they actually make a decision. So something to, to really make sure that you are taking into account your own business case when measuring this, but it can provide you with quite valuable insights in terms of just user experience on, on your landing page as well as the just attractiveness of your offers um, and your products. Just in terms of um, engagement rate, again, if it's low and you, for example, have dedicated landing pages, then that would make sense, right? If you have dedicated landing pages and your goal is not for people to shop around and browse, then that would make sense. It wouldn't be a red flag in that sense. Um, so just be wary of that. Then the final metric would be add to cart rate. So we want to take into account the amount of people that actually go onto our site that take a, a next step. Um, that shows intent. So we want to consider this um, because ultimately a low add to cart rate um, could again um, kind of highlight specific issues or certain issues that, that users might be experiencing on your site. So there might be a need for optimization there um, or just to add more urgencies, um, tactics, for example, or scarcity tactics to really kind of drive that, that engagement on your website and to try and encourage users to take that next step and to add to cart and to take some action. Um, so always important to make sure that you are optimizing that user experience as well as the content that you have on your site um, and that it's geared towards driving action, right? And to, to encourage users to, to um, take further action on your website. Then the last objective we're gonna look at is driving um, purchases. So again, this comes down to your website experience as well. But in addition to that, it can also relate to the offers that you have available um, and the content on your site. So the first one is the conversion rate. So the percentage of people that actually convert, so that actually takes the desired action. Um, in this case, we've used purchase, but it can also be um, related to any other action that, that you've defined as your primary um, conversion action. And... Again, we want this as high as possible, right? So the, more, the higher our conversion rate, the more effective we are in converting the traffic that, that's coming to our site. And a low conversion rate can suggest the user experience issue or unmet user expectations. So 
Um, we need to identify the primary obstacles that are hindering our conversions um, and tackle these issues in your ads as well as your landing page. The second one is cost per conversion. So what is the what are we actually paying to acquire um, a customer or a purchase? Um, and this really just helps us understand the cost effectiveness of our campaigns. So here, yeah, A-B testing can become really crucial um, to identify winning creatives that convert at our desired CPA, so at that profitable CPA that you've defined for, for your business. We can then move on to the ROAS, so the return on ad spend. So that just looks at the amount of revenue that is earned for every dollar spent on a campaign. And this really evaluates the effectiveness of an ad campaign in generating revenue. A low ROAS can indicate inefficient budget spending, and it also may prompt a review of a campaign of your campaign elements like creative content, copy, the audience targeting, the offers that you're putting out there, as well as your landing page experience. So we really want to maximize our um, efficiency with how we're spending as well as the amount that we're getting back. Um, and we want to maximize that as much as possible. Then lastly, we've got AOV. This is also a custom metric that you would um, add to, to your set of columns. And ultimately, we just want to monitor that because obviously we want to maximize our AOV as well. Because if we can maximize our AOV, we'll be able to increase our ROAS at the same spend. So ways that we can try and alter or manipulate this is by changing our landing pages um, and offering bundles or upsell opportunities. Um, or by featuring more products in our ad. So we want to encourage people to increase their basket sizes um, so that we can get a better return for each purchase that, that we generate. Then finally, we have some bonus um, metrics in our cheat sheet, which is the attribution analysis as well as the go-to search rate. So attribution analysis is something that I think a lot of people forget about or might not even be aware of. But we can compare our attribution settings in Meta, um, where we can analyze the performance metrics and how they vary across different attribution windows. So this can really provide insight into how long it typically, typically takes for our ads to convert clicks into purchases. So let's say we see a lot more conversions within the seven-day window compared to the one-day window. It suggests that your ads have a longer decision-making period. So it can also help you identify how many purchases are actually a direct result of your ads and not just a view through conversion. Because obviously with Meta, it also takes into account view through, um, which isn't always a direct result, or well, that isn't a direct result um, of your ad. And that often can inflate um, your results as well. So by using the compare attribution setting or feature, you can really dive a bit deeper into exactly how you acquired um, those conversions and make or oh, well, draw some insightful um, insights from that. Then we also have your go to search rate. So this is also a custom metric, so just something that you need to set up. And this can help you understand how often people who see your ads are motivated to conduct a search, potentially indicating the effectiveness of your ad in sparking interest or curiosity. And then we've also included just the steps on how exactly to go about setting this up. Um, and yeah, then you can just add it to your columns and include that in your creative analysis process. Awesome. So this is it for the Met Metametrics cheat sheet. Um, we'll have the, the template um, option to download for free. So yeah, until next time.